All right, today I want to talk to you about a special distribution. Last time, the last previous video, it was a uniform distribution, but this one is a normal distribution. You'll see a lot um, of this in different types of literature because it's so important to science and mathematics and engineering. Uh, you may see it also at, called a Gaussian, a Gaussian distribution, uh, depends on what book you read. But a random variable x with probability, this is a function, f of x equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi times sigma, all of that multiplied times e raised to the power, this is our natural number e, raised to the power of negative x minus mu squared divided by 2 sigma squared, 2 times sigma squared, from negative infinity to positive infinity. And this is a normal random variable with parameters mu, where mu is still the mean, is still the expected value. Uh, where mu also is between negative infinity and positive infinity, and sigma is positive. And so v of x is our variance, and so sigma is our standard deviation. And oftentimes you'll see this denoted as n parentheses mu comma sigma squared. So when you see this, you know you're dealing with a normal distribution. So... For any normal random variable or normal distribution, uh, the probability of mu minus sigma less than x less than mu plus sigma would be equal to 0 0.6827. I'll show what that means in just a second. The probability of mu minus 2 sigma in less than x less than mu plus 2 sigma is equal to 0 0.9545. And the probability of mu minus 3 sigma less than x less than mu plus 3 sigma is equal to 0 0.9973. So this said that the probability of x between these two values is 0 0.6827. Just said the probability of x being between these two values is 0 0.9973. And so uh, if we look at this chart here, this graph is the graph of a typical normal distribution, badly drawn, but just try to imagine it being as close to perfect as possible. Uh, if this is mu, which is always in the center, uh, mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma will contain 0.6827 of the area under the curve. Uh, mu minus 2 sigma to mu plus 2 sigma will, will contain 0 0.9545 of the information under the curve or the data under the curve. And all the way from mu minus 3 sigma to mu plus 3 sigma will contain 0 0.9973. But if you recall, this, the total area on this total curve from negative infinity to positive infinity will equal to 1. So this makes sense about the amount of information, the amount of data under the curve. So we have a standard normal random variable or a standard normal distribution. A normal random variable with mu equal to 0 and sigma squared equal to 1. This is also called a standard normal distribution and denoted as z. Now the cumulative distribution function is denoted as phi of z equal to p of z, the probability of capital Z less than equal to lowercase z. So this is saying the probability of everything less than this particular value of z. And we'll see more about what that means in just a moment. So you saw the PDF earlier and it looks complicated. Uh, hopefully you weren't thinking about trying to integrate that because that's difficult, depends on what you're doing or what you're dealing with. Uh, so most of the time we try to find the values for our probability or for our Z. We're looking at a table or we're using Excel or Minitab. We won't be using Excel or Minitab here, but uh, we'll definitely use a table. And we'll look at an example here. We want to find the probability of Z Let's stick with a 1.53. And most, most tables have it in this format. The probability of Z less equal to Z. And that's what we have here, Z less equal to 1.53. And when that's the case, we convert it to phi of Z, and then we search for Z. And that's our probability. It's actually fairly simple to find on a table. And if you're good with programming, you can find it using Excel or Minitab or some other software, but to find it on most tables, and, and I want to also note that not every table is like this. Some table will give you everything. 
Um, but most tables just give you only the probability of Z less equal to Z. So to find this, I go to my left hand, the, um, the left side, the column on the left side, and I go down until I get to 1.5. You'll see other numbers there, but you want to go down until you get to 1.5, and then you go to the right until you get to 0 0.03. And that value, where they intersect, will be the probability of obtaining file 1.53. So the probability of Z less than equal to 1.53 is 0 0.93699. And so if we look here at the graph here, if we're assuming that 1.53 is here, remember that in the middle is supposed to be zero and the uh, the, uh, vari the not the variance, but the uh, standard deviation is equal to one because it's a standard normal distribution. Then all of this, until you get to negative infinity, is the area under the curve up to 1.53. And that's going to equal to 0 0.93699. Now something else that I want to point out, sometimes you're asked uh, what particular value of X because Z comes from X in a lot of cases. Or what particular value of Z would give you a certain probability? So if we were asking that question, um, let's say what particular value of Z would give me 0. 0.932. Um, I would look for a value that's close to 0. 0.932. And the way I got it written here, this would be the closest value to 0. 0.932. So it's not an exact sign we use in the table, but it's close. So my Z would be 1.5. If I said um, 0.9337, I would choose this one because this one is closer to 0.9337 than the value I have here. And so the Z for this will be 1.51. So I'm just working backwards using the table. And again, um, Excel, mini tab, put in a few uh, terms and it'll, do the, it'll give you the answer uh, automatically. But using the table is not that hard either. All right, so sometimes your, your mu is not zero and sometimes your uh, variance or, or standard deviation is not one. So in that particular case, what you want to do is to use a z-score. Uh, you want to standardize the normal random variable. So suppose X is a normal random variable with mean mu and varying sigma squared. The random variable Z equal to X minus mu over sigma. We call this a Z score. A Z score is a normal random variable with E of Z, the expected value of Z equal to zero, and the variance of Z equal to one. So let's look at an example here. Suppose the current measure in a strip of wire has a normal distribution with mu equal to 10 and sigma equal to two. What is the probability that the current measurement is between nine and 11 milliampers? So this is the probability that nine is less than X is less than 11. So we want to find the Z scores of all of these. So that's nine minus 10, um, X minus mu divided by sigma, less than X minus mu divided by sigma, less than 11 minus mu divided by sigma. sigma. These two will give you numerical values, negative 0 0.5 and a positive 0 0.5. And this of course is our Z. And so to find this, we need to find the probability of Z less than 0 0.5 minus the probability Z less than negative 0 0.5. Because what we're trying to do is find what's in between the two. I want to illustrate here for a moment, although this is for something else. If 0 0.5 is here, and let's say uh, negative 0 0.5 is here, this graph will give you everything to the left of that value. So everything to the left of negative 0 0.5 will go this way. And everything to the left of 0 0.5 will go this way. And so to find the actual value, you have to subtract the larger value minus the smaller value to get what's in the middle. And so that's what I'm doing here. It just so happened to be a negative value. If this was positive, I wouldn't need to do all this. I would just find 
5 or 0 0.5 and 5 or whatever this number is subtracted to. But this negative value um, is a problem because when you have the probability of Z less than a negative value for this type of chart where X is less than equal to X, and this is a CDF chart, the cumulative distribution function chart, uh, you rewrite it as 1 minus 5 of that particular number, the positive form of that number. And also note, that when you have the probability of Z greater than a particular number, you rewrite that as one minus five of that particular number. The reason why is because, like I said, it's giving you everything to the left. But in this particular case, Z is greater than A. That's what we want here. So to find this little part here, I just find a complement of everything to the left. And the complement would be one minus everything to the left. So why am I doing the same thing here? Well, if you look at this little part right here and this little part right here, those areas are the same. So they are going to be equal. So that's a side note. Uh, this is explaining why for the probability of Z less than negative 0 0.5, I have one minus five of 0 0.5. So after I've looked those up in the chart, in a table, or use whatever software I want to use to find those Z scores, uh, those numbers because this is the actual z-score here so this is gives me 0 0.69146 and this gives me a 0 0.30854 and then i subtract those two so here's my probabilities so again my zero my z-score is 0 0.5 but the actual probability for 0 0.5 is 0 0.69146 and one minus five of 0 0.5 or the probability for negative 0 0.5 is 0 0.30 854 to so track those two and now i have the probability that the um measurement the current measurement between 9 and 11 milliampers so this is my final answer here all right so let's look at an example uh, another example we want to determine the value for which the probability that a current measurement is below 0 0.98. So it may not be obvious, but what you're trying to do is find an X so that the probability is Z is below 0 0.98 or equal to 0 0.98 according to our chart. So the probability of X less than X is X minus 10 uh, divided by 2 less than X minus 10 divided by 2. And this is what we do to represent our Z score. So we're going to rewrite that as Z. We're going to leave this alone because we're trying to find this particular X right here. So this is equal to 0 0.98. Now, I don't have a chart here, but if you were looking at the chart, you would look within the chart for 0 0.98. It's going to be uh, four or five digits deep. So you want to try to get as close to 0 0.98 as possible. Once you find that 0 0.98 somewhere in that chart, you have a value here and a value here. In this particular case, this value was 2, and this value was 0.05. And so the closest value to give me that gives me 0 0.98, assuming this is 0 0.98 something, would be 2.05. That's my Z. So I set that Z equal to X minus 10 over 2, and then I solve for X. So X equal to 14.1 milliampers is the correct value that would give me 0 0.98 as the uh, probability for all values less than that. So this Long story short, it's saying the probability of X less than 14.1 is equal to 0 0.98. And this is what we found. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. I will talk to you later.